Hello you beautiful people, it's Liquid here giving you a warm welcome back or to the channel and as always I hope you're doing fantastic. Now you join me in slightly unfamiliar circumstances, um, we're in the F15 today and we're going to be doing some crazy aerobatics shall we say. Now I had a comment quite a while back at this point on the channel asking how we can basically do some thrust vectoring style manoeuvring with the F-15. Uh, it's very similar to the SU-27, however, like, unlike the SU-27, the F-15 responds in a very different way. So I've spent quite a lot of time at this point doing some stupid things with the F-15, learning how to recover from them, and basically in preparation for recording this. Now I do have the controls indicator on screen on the bottom right corner so you can check out all what I'm doing. There's our left engine, there's our right engine and all the stick movements. So I've been calling this uh, differential thrust for quite some time but it's not differential thrust, it's actually called asymmetric thrust. So if you're applying just pure power on the left engine the aircraft's going to want to twist and tilt to the right, same way if you do the right engine on its own, it's going to want to tilt and twist to the left. You're basically pushing the aircraft in one direction. Now the major difference between the F-15 and the SU-27 is the F-15's engines are very close together, whereas in the SU-27 you have a much larger gap between both engines which allows you to do a bit more crazier things with the SU-27 and to be honest with you, manoeuvre the SU-27 using asymmetric thrust a lot more easily. However, with a bit of brute force and a bit of afterburner on one side, you can get the F-15 to do some crazy things. So let's go brakes on, let's get these engines spooled, and let's go for a little flight. Now, don't expect this to be realistic by any means. I doubt you will ever see an F-15 manoeuvring in these ways. Full burner, bring that nose up. Now another difference between the SU-27 and the F-15 is the F-15 responds in a similar way like the MiG-29. As if I pull full stick back, there is nothing between me and basically the aircraft deciding you're getting everything you want from the aircraft at that exact time. Whereas the SU-27 does have a fly-by-wire control system, so it's a little more refined, it's a little more smoother when it comes to manoeuvring, but of course you can disable that with the good old press of the S key and go a little bit crazy. So, intro done and dusted, let's get into it. Utilising the South Atlantic map for this one. Now I want to be above about six and a half thousand feet for this one. We're going to cut the power on both engines. We're going to wait for around 300 knots. You can see we are full right engine, full left stick, full left rudder and we're just holding back and we're going to get her to fall into a flat spin eventually, there we go now this is where recovery gets a little bit trickier than in the SU-27 we're going to go full right rudder I'm going to try and pitch the nose down and we're going full afterburner on the left engine Pull that left engine back, match the engines back up, centre the rudder pedal and let's head back towards the beautiful show box. Again, don't respect, don't respect, don't expect even any sort of realism to come out of this one. Yes, we know, over G, over G. We won't be using this airframe again, so it's okay. Over G. 
Not full deflection on the stick, but we're going up once more. I'm going to go through the clouds here. I'm wait for the speed to bleed off a little bit more. Hold her there. Same again. Full afterburner. I'll try and push that. You do have to fight with her a little bit. Once again, trying to push the aircraft into the flat spin. We're going to roll off that right engine now. We're going to go full left, full right rudder, sorry. We're going to flat spin our way through the clouds. Full afterburner on the left engine. We're going to drop the nose and recover once more. Match both engines back up again. Now, as most of you will know, I am not really the biggest F-15 fan. As we make a mess of this airframe. However, in all the little sort of flights that I've done to prepare for recording this to see what you can get away with, what you can't get away with, we are very close to the water here. I have enjoyed, like, giving it some grief and it really is quite a powerhouse of a thing. As we go up again, this time we're going to try and keep the aircraft in the vertical. I'm going to pull back that right engine. We're going to go full afterburner on the left. Lots of beeping. Okay, now we're going to roll back that engine. Let the aircraft settle down itself. Match the engines again. One thing as well is, uh, by doing this, the F-15 also seems to be quite uh, tolerant of some very strange manoeuvring that you don't get any engine stalls. Unlike the old MiG-21. If you spend any more time inverted than it takes you to eat a custard cream whilst having a good old cup of tea, uh, that engine will cut out very quickly. And you won't even be finished your custard cream. Anyway, once more we'll go up. Utilising the power of these two beastly engines. I'm going to wait for almost reaching stall speed here. We're just going to maintain this. And push the nose, they're 150 knots. Full right engine. Let it spool. Full left rudder. Now we're going to pull. And hold it there, full left stick. A full left stick deflection, holding back the all the way. And there she goes. I'm gonna cut back on that engine. I'm gonna hold her there for a couple of seconds. We are full right rudder, and now we're going to push in that left engine once again as we come back towards the clouds. Left engine starts to spool, full afterburner on the left engine, push the nose. There we go. Center the rudder, match the engines back up. So it is possible to do some pretty crazy things with the F-15. You can get this jet to flat spin. 
by using uh, asymmetric thrust and we're going to go for a nice low pass on the airfield to wrap this one up bring in the burners, oh yes I break out. I break in. She's getting a little bit shaky on us, that's okay. Cannot see any information in the HUD. Gear and flaps coming down. Let's see how smoothly I can land this F-15. It was one thing where practicing flying this thing did actually help. Because my landings in the F-15 previously have not been smooth. Basically, if you were to throw a sack of potatoes out of a tall building, that was how smoothly I landed the F-15 in the past. We are coming in a little bit faster. We're going to deploy the air brake. Approaching 150. A little more stick deflection. Hold it there. We are idle. There we go. That wasn't too bad in the end. So there you go. If you want to flat spin the F-15, you completely can. You can't quite do the same sort of twists and sort of turns as the SU-27, but you can definitely do some crazy things and push the F-15 out of its comfort zone, shall we say. So there you go. We will apply the brakes. A little wiggle towards the end there. It's really nice that they give us a parking area as well. I think uh, after that manoeuvring, the airframe would definitely be needing uh, a parking area. We're just going to park here and enjoy the view. But there you go, I'm really sorry it did take so long to actually get to this. Um, the F-15, as I've said in previous videos, it really is not uh, one of my most favourite modules at all. But in doing a lot of these flights for basically the preparation to record this, I have enjoyed spending a bit more time with it and it kind of gives me a little bit of hype for the Strike Eagle so maybe we'll see just what that can do when we get our hands on it in the future but anyway there you go I just want to say a huge thanks to you for taking the time to watch this um, if there's anything else anything in particular that you want to see from DCS do let me know like I've mentioned in a couple of videos previously as well there will be some combat stuff coming because I think at this point I've done so much stuff in the, the airshow spectrum and demo flights that it's time to start digging into the combat stuff now that I've learned a bit more in various modules. But that's stuff for another day. So I will bid you farewell for now. I will catch you in the next video. Until then, please do take care and stay safe. This is Liquid, signing off. <laughs>